The Chem is C5 with 5 Newton meters and its unique integrated design has already won over many sim racers. Now, the direct drive wheel mid range for PC has a new challenger. With the C12, the Chinese manufacturer goes one step further, revising the design, offering a much more versatile product and above all, a whopping 12 Newton meters of torque. What makes the steering wheel so interesting and where is there room for improvement? Let's find out together. Welcome back to another hardware review here at Overtake. The unique concept of these Camus C-Series wheels is to offer the direct drive motor and wheel as a single unit, eliminating the need for a quick release, making it a bit more beginner friendly as you are not overwhelmed with an ecosystem of interchangeable wheels. That said, this time it is possible to change your wheel, but more on that later. Camus calls this external rotor design and the advantages are obvious. Not only does it take up less space and allow you to mount it much closer to your screen, but it also adds rigidity and technically eliminates any flex. The C12 is definitely the most compact of all 12 Newton meter wheels. A recent survey in our community tab shows that most of you use a wheel in the 6 to 12 Newton meter range. It is therefore not surprising that there are many options on the market that compete with the C12 in the 10 to 12 Newton meter range. Camus is offering the C12 for pre-order now with a $50 deposit with a total sticker price of $699 or down to $499 for those who order early which is a highly competitive offer. While filming this review, it says out of stock, unfortunately. This optional desk clamp retails at $39. All prices are before shipping and any taxes. And what are the alternatives? There are the direct drive wheelbases from Azatec with the La Prima, the Fanatec Clubsport DD, Mosa R12, or the Thrustmaster T818. If you take the list price, the gap is not very big, but all of them come without a wheel. So you're usually looking at another 200 to 300 dollars or euros on top of that. The Logitech Pro Racing Wheel is also a good example, but it also scratches the 1000 dollar mark. This should make the C12 interesting for many people who set a certain limit for themselves, but want a correspondingly powerful FFB engine. Just be sure to calculate shipping and all the extra taxes for yourself and compare again then. Let's see what we can get for our money, but first, for free, you should hit that sub button and the bell to activate notifications to not miss out on future videos. In addition to the C12, the package includes a small toolkit, power supply and cable, USB cable, instruction manual and a T-bracket for your rig or wheel stand. The extra desk clamp is kinda recommended as it also contains an extra fan which should help maintain lower temperatures and thus less power loss, especially on hot summer days. You can control this temperature management to some extent in the software. It still has a pattern that allows mounting on a rig, but you would need some lock nuts. Um, I just clamped it to my plate to see how rigid it is. It did not move a millimeter, even with stronger forces. The wheel itself is more of a button box with a 6 by 70 millimeter pattern that gives you a lot of options for customization. I was immediately hooked and wanted to screw my Fanatec Porsche Alcantara wheel onto it. Unfortunately, one bolt sticks out right in the middle, so I couldn't get any further without spacers. A design flaw, but doable. The standard wheel is 300 mm in diameter and has a good build quality, wrapped in synthetic leather with stitching. The round shape seems to be a response to drifters and rally drivers criticizing the D-shape of the previous C5. The total weight of the unit is 4.8 kilograms. The product generally looks and feels high quality and the pressure points of the buttons and encoders are nothing to sneeze at compared to the competition such as Moza. On the front there are 10 backlit push buttons, two 12 position switches, and the silver one ones are on the left a head switch that can also be used as a mouse substitute. The right silver one is a seven-way funky switch. Next to them two rotary encoders and on top two thumb encoders as well. The upper knobs can be set to direction via software so they work two-way left and right. There's also a diminutive display for information such as speed or gear selected and an LED strip to showcase refs. What looks like a flag LEDs or TC or ABS indicators are not functional. Maybe they will be with future updates. The rear magnetic shift pedals are a huge step up from the C5 where they were super tiny. Dual clutch pedals would have been the icing on the cake in terms of button layout. Also on the back are the all important inputs for PC sim racing including the fan input, 
USB data port, power reset button, the power button, and USB Type-C for optional pedals, handbrakes, or shifters. This may hint at more additions to the Camus ecosystem in the future. Let's mount and install. The manual is very easy to understand and straightforward. We download the Camus Racing Drive software from their website, which like many Chinese suppliers is not certified for Windows. You just have to force the installation, but after installing, updating, and checking the firmware, the wheel is easily recognized. The software is on the simple side, allowing for basic settings such as wheel rotation up to 2520 degrees, force dampening, friction, inertia and spring settings. Under assistance we can also monitor the temperature. Under devices we also find the dashboard settings which allows us to change the backlight of our 10 buttons. The RPM lights are also customizable and offer different presets. You can also save your settings and assign them to the game profiles. So far the overall user experience is really comfortable. Let's see if it holds up once we jump into the first sim. My first test was iRacing, jumping into the Cadillac in Daytona to do some practice laps for the Potatona event we are participating in this Saturday. Be sure to say hello on our Twitch. After some tweaking and setup, the C12 uh, threw good punch in my hands but being used to my previous daily drivers, the Moza R9 and for a few weeks now the Fanatec Club Sport DD Plus, the overall detail and feel of what the car and my tires are doing is a bit underwhelming. Also the shift lights in iRacing do not match very well and the speedometer freezes even sometimes. In general I would say that everything related to force and road feel is fine, just everything the car does is not quite there in terms of communication. Fanatec and Moza have some secret sauce to their FFB tweaking that I'm missing here. Running over the 3D curbs in Mugello shows that the frequency and translation of the road texture is absolutely fine though. Next stop is the newest of the sim racing bunch, Le Mans Ultimate. The LED elements and speedometer are not working yet and I had to invert the FFB to get it to work. Um, the feel is strong and very lively but the criticism I had with iRacing remains. Not as good as a feel for tire slip and general forces of the car itself, rather a constant force, but the road effects especially at Sebring are good. The downside is that the motor makes significant mechanical noises and rubs only in this simulation. This is a bit disturbing and um, doesn't really feel healthy, so I personally would stay away from longer LMU sessions with this reel until there's an update. We also ask chemist about this. Once we have an update, you will find it in a pinned comment. In ACC then, the shift lights match much better than in iRacing with the NSX GT3 I tested and no freezes of the speedometer either. Very similar feel to the previous two titles honestly, the very strong FFB. I had to tone it down quite a bit and had no problems with clipping at an FFB level that felt good to me. This was a problem for me with the weaker Moza R9 9Nm I used before uh, the Fanatec DD+. Definite bonus for the C12 here. Then I went to test Automobilista 2 and I just couldn't get the steering to work, which was very frustrating because I saw other people driving AMS2 with this exact wheel. I tried many things without success, maybe you have an idea. We also asked Chemist about this, we'll also pin it in the comment once I have a reply. Rally titles are also very important to us here at Overtake, so EA Sports WRC was next. It was very easy to set up and 100% FFB is way too much, so I lowered all the bars in the game to about 50% and turned off the center spring. It was a good feel of Overall, but there is a weird FFB like pulsing after 90% steering angle that killed a lot of the experience. What a shame. Because then I tried Dirt Rally 2.0 to see if it's the same story and with that title I had by far the best experience with the C12. It was by far the easiest to set up, even with some predefined button mappings. The profile for the first time made sense and did something. It had a strong, detailed and natural feel. The weird pulsing of EA Sports WRC was uh, thankfully absent. This title gave me some hope that the right FFB tweaks and presets can make a difference with this wheel. And that brings me to the verdict.
Was the offer and the first impression too good to be true? The FFB has not really convinced me yet, but this is always a question of what you are used to. But this wheel has a lot of potential and offers a lot of force and uh, works very smooth and quiet except for the more ultimate. Cam still has some work to do on the software and tweaking for individual sim titles. If they deliver that, I can really recommend the product because the package itself and the quality is there. Tell us about your experience also with delivery and customer support, as this is also a deciding factor for many, of course. If you are looking for an entry-level all-in-one bundle that also works with PS5, this review of the PXNV12 Lite might be interesting for you. See you next time and thanks for watching.